In today's video, my colleague Jeff is going to talk you through ChatGPT and a cool add-in that he's built for Excel. It's free, you can download it, you can access all the code. It's pretty amazing. He's also done one for Outlook and Word that you can also download. Let him talk you through it. Jeff is the founder of Access Analytic. He's a financial modeler, Excel trainer, uh, mountain climber. He's an awesome guy. Okay, check out his video. In this video, we'll have a look at how we can bring ChatGPT into Excel, Outlook and Word. So you can easily pass data into ChatGPT and get a response with just a click of a button. Let's take a look. Microsoft have already announced that they're integrating ChatGPT with pretty much everything there is on the planet. And they've already started to show off what they can do with Copilot and Bing. If you haven't had a look at those, take a look at those really cool stuff. Unfortunately, not all available to everyone and also requires too much typing. So today what we're going to have a look at is how we can bring the most useful functions of ChatGPT into our favorite Office products with just the click of a button. Firstly, a shout out and a massive thank you to Leila Garani for developing the original Office script code and then also to Sven from Coding is Fun for transporting this into VBA. What I'll show you today builds on their solutions. To get started, what you'll need is a free ChatGPT account. You can get this very easily just using the links below. After that, uh, just grab the text files that we've provided, again using the links below, and you can get started. What you'll need to do is grab the text file, copy all of the contents out of there, and if you're using Excel, place that in your personal workbook. If you're using Word, put it in your normal template. If you're using Outlook, put it in the VBA module of your Outlook. Then all we do is I've added some buttons to my quick access toolbar to make each of these accessible. So what I'd like to do is I'll show you what we've created and you can take a look and see how this all works. First up, let's have a look at Excel. So in Excel, uh, what I've done, you can see I've added a few extra buttons to the top of my quick access toolbar. To do this, it's very easy. All you do is click on this little link at the end of your quick access toolbar. You can come down here to more commands, choose macros, and then you'll see the uh, or see the macros in your personal workbook. Add that into here, choose an icon, and modify that to be your custom icon. So one of the things I might want to do is I want to, I might want to analyze some data. You can see I've got some data here. I'm just going to highlight this data. And one of the buttons I've added here is a link to analyze this data. Click on that. It sends the data over to ChatGPT, and there's my response coming back with some insights and also some trends about what it thinks might have been causing these insights in my data. So what I'm doing is really just saving myself a bunch of time from having to type in all of my different prompts because there's going to be prompts I want to use on a regular basis. What if I've got, maybe I've got a long formula over here and I, someone's given me this really long formula, can't understand it, what does it do? Well, I've got a button up here that just says explain this formula. All right, and ChatGPT has given me a description of what this formula should be doing. All right, so in plain English, I can then um, understand what it's trying to tell me. All right, maybe with this long formula, maybe there's a better way of writing this formula. Well, let's see whether ChatGPT can come up with a better way of writing this formula. I've got an optimized formula button here, and it's given me an optimized formula here. I'll just comment this so I can actually read it. All right, and it's given me an optimized formula, which I don't think is any better than what I originally had, but it thinks this is a better version of what I had previously. Hmm. Okay, fine. Now, let's say you've got a very long formula and it's been written without any thought to formatting or anything like that, and you just want to make this formula easier to read. Well, we have a button that allows you to format your formulas. Simply click on the cell, click the Format Formula button, And ChatGPT generates a reformatted, beautifully indented and multiple line formula that you can then copy back to use in your Excel version. Maybe I've just got some data here and I want to be able to forecast this forward and project forward what it's going to do in the future. So I could highlight some data, click on my little forecast button here. How far do I want to forecast? Let's just do the next 12 months. All right, and there's a forecast based on what my data was. I want ChatGP to write a formula for me based on the numbers that I've selected and I want it to refer to these particular cells. So I could just basically click a button, 
describe what I want to do and I put in the range which is whatever of cells I've currently got selected. So here's my little example here, increase all the values in whatever this range is by 5%. Maybe I just really don't know how to do much in Excel at all. All right, and there's the formula specifically referring to those particular cells. Maybe I just want to type something in a cell and get Excel to do something for me or get ChatGPT to do something for me. All right, and what I've said is give me some different product names with some fake sales for 12 months as a table. And so when I specify as a table, um, the macro basically brings back the result and splits it up into different cells. All right, here's a couple of other examples. All right, there's the most recent, I don't know what year this is, but most recent uh, American NBA basketball stats. And here's Microsoft's last 12 quarters of sales and revenues and so on. Give me that one in a table as well. I've got a client's balance sheet. Now this is just made up stuff, just all examples data. But I can click on here and I just want to do an analysis of this data. And ChatGPT comes back with an analysis of the balance sheet over those different years. So let's say you want to do something that doesn't already have one of our existing buttons. Well, what you can do is you could simply type your prompt into a cell, highlight the data you want to use with that prompt, and then this data will be inserted wherever you type range like I have here. Click the button and I now choose this cell and click OK. And ChatGPT has produced a result for us. Now, if you're using the free version, you really want to make sure that you check the results that ChatGPT produces for you if you're doing number calculations because it doesn't always get the calculations right. Indeed, if you calculate this, you'll find those numbers don't add up. What you would want to do is, if you have the plus version of ChatGPT, is to use the Wolfram Alpha add-in, or the plugin, sorry, Wolfram Alpha plugin. And that will do the calculations for you and be far more accurate. So let's switch over to Word and what I've got is some text that I've taken from the Wikipedia article on quantum mechanics. Very complicated stuff, but I just want a simple explanation. ChatGPT, can you just like explain this to me? I don't really understand it. All right, and here we go. Quantum mechanics is this and that. So it's given me a, a more, a much simpler kind of explanation. Not quite sure what this is up here. <laughs> a little bit of extra stuff there. Maybe in Word, what I've done is I've written a very complex article and I just want ChatGPT to be able to optimize this article for me. All right, so it's written the same, it's got the same content, but it's just optimized the language to make it simpler, to make it clearer. And if I think that's too long, well, what I could do is just summarize that. I go, well, that's way too long. Can you just summarize that for me? There we go. Very simple, simple and short now. <laughs> so I've got two benefits there. And maybe in here I see down the bottom, you know, there's this concept called quantum entanglement. Tell me what, what does that mean? You know, explanation of that. And I okay, go, maybe this is a bit shorter, a bit too short. I want a little bit more information about quantum entanglement. I can just ask it to expand on that and give me more information. All right, so now I've got a little bit more information about that. And if I think, you know, okay, that sounds really interesting. What I'd like to do is I'd like to create a little blog post about this. How would I do that? Well, there's no button to specifically do that particular thing, but I have got a button up here that says, describe what you want ChatGPT to do in the relation to the text, which is what you've currently got selected. So let's say instead of just one headline, let's give me 10 um, blog post headlines for this text. There we go. Now the cool thing about these is that if these are not your prompts, if you want to do something different, all you need to do is go into developer mode over here. And if you don't see the developer ribbon, just right click, customize the ribbon and select developer. So you see developer, just tick that box over there. You'll now see developer ribbon. So all I do is go into the developer ribbon, visual basic. And all I do is come down here and I go, okay, copy one of these. And instead of uh, explaining, I might want to change the prompt here. So you could just change this to any prompt you want, copy paste it, we'll quick give your macro a new name, and then simply create a link from one of your buttons to your new macro. 
So it becomes quite easy for you to customize this to suit your particular needs and do whatever it is that you need to do in your work. Lastly, let's go have a look at what we can do with Outlook. All right, so in Outlook, same sort of thing. We have a bunch of different buttons in here that allow us to do some really cool things. So I've just got an email from uh, this particular person. It's actually from me, I've sent it to myself. Okay, fine. What I could do is I could reply, no. And for every email that I've got highlighted, it's gonna reply with a negative response. This would come up with my default signature if I had one set up. Maybe I just wanna reply and just say thank you to this person for sending this to me. So I'll just give them a thank you response. If I just wanted to say yes, there you go, reviewed it, looks great. Let's say um, I get an email and I go, well, what does that particular term mean? So I'll just explain whatever term I happen to highlight in there. And again, if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could say with this one, just type in some text. So again, I could summarize an email. I could you know, type in whatever chat GPT prompt you want to type in. Again, you can modify these prompts to suit yourself as well. All right, so let's say I'm writing an email and I just want to reword this email. I'm not sure if I've written this in the, in the best kind of way. I could just highlight this text here and say, I'd like to just reword this. There we go. So it's reworded it, made it much more concise. So those are just some of the things that we could do. Hope that this has been useful for you. If you'd like to download these and install them, uh, use the links below. Uh, there'll be some guidance on the page as to how to do that. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.